Hey, what's up guys? My name is Marshall Daniels. I am the builder and tuner of Daniels Made Hand Pans. I've been a hand pan player for 10 years and a builder for close to five years. Most of that time I have spent learning how to build instruments made of this material, nitrided steel. But over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of interest shown among makers and players alike in a new material, stainless steel. So today I thought I would make a comparison video of two instruments that I have built of the same scale, D Celtic Minor 10, one made of nitrided steel, one made of stainless. Now I'd like to provide a disclaimer. These are instruments that I myself have built. There are a lot of preferences and opinions out there, a lot of different styles by a lot of different makers and players. So I am not the end all be all for these two materials, but hopefully this will give you a little bit more information just in case you're trying to find out what the differences between the two instruments are and you're getting ready to make a purchase. First, let's start with the original material, nitrided steel. Nitriding is a gas heat treatment process that case hardens the surface of a raw steel shell. This provides a couple of advantages for hand pans. The first is that it creates a corrosion shield on the surface of the steel and helps protect the instrument from rusting. The second is that it increases the sonic potential of the metal and provides a great canvas for tuners like myself to build instruments that have warm tone, strong volume, and long sustain. All of these things put together, it's easy to see why nitrided steel has been the material of choice for makers and players since the handpan's first conception. Let's take a listen to this Daniels made D Celtic Minor 10 made from nitrided steel. I think that's a great sounding instrument. One of my favorite qualities about nitrided material is its warm, rich tone. It could almost be described like an earthy timbre. Also, each tone field is very resonant. It only takes a light strike to activate each individual note. Now let's look at stainless steel. Stainless is also an iron and carbon alloy, but with an additional component. Most stainless is made up of somewhere between 10 and 30% chromium, which results in a material that is highly resistant to rust and corrosion. Also, stainless is higher in elasticity than most carbon steels, making it resistant to deformation. This has ramifications for makers such as myself, because with each hammer strike, the stainless actually resists deforming into the shape that you're trying to force it into. This creates a very different sonic profile and tone in stainless steel instruments. Stainless and nitrided material also differ visually. You may have noticed that a lot of nitrided instruments have more of a matte, dark gray, blue, sometimes purple color to them, as opposed to stainless, which has more of a shiny, glossy sheen and can vary in color from gold, copper, brown, and sometimes purple. This is mainly a result of the thermal gradient that is achieved when heat treating each instrument in its building process, usually in a kiln. Now let's take a look at this Daniels made D Celtic Minor 10 made from stainless steel. One of the first things that stands out is that stainless steel instruments have significantly longer sustain than nitrided steel instruments. In each tone field, there are three frequencies built into the note, the fundamental, the octave, and the compound fifth above the octave. One of the most sought after qualities of a well-built handpan is its ability to sympathetically activate and resonate other notes within the scale. Some people might describe this as the sound bloom of a handpan. What this means is that when you strike one note on the scale, the frequencies built within that tone field should be the same as other frequencies found in the scale and should activate those as well. For example, we have a D3 center ding on this instrument. 
So built within the tone field is the D4 octave along the major axis and the A4 fifth along the minor axis. So when we play this note, it should activate the D4 and the A4 found within this scale. Now you should be able to find this sound bloom on both stainless and nitrided instruments, but with stainless, it seems to have an added effect with the tonal clarity that's found within this type of material. Now that we've discussed both materials and some of their differences, I want to play you a clip of a song from one of my favorite movies on both instruments and let your ears be the judge. So in summary, nitrided handpans have a warm, rich, smooth tonal quality to their sound. Stainless instruments have a clear, powerful, almost angelic-like timbre to their sound. Both instruments are very well protected from rust and weather, although it could be argued that stainless is more protected due to the nature of the surface case hardening on the nitrided handpans. Should the surface get scratched and expose the raw steel underneath, that could leave possibilities for rust to form. Both materials are very aesthetically pleasing, with each one offering different options for color, sheen, and overall finish. Nitrided handpans are usually more cost effective and stainless handpans a little bit more expensive. Ultimately, which material should you choose? That's completely up to your preference and what most resonates with you. As a builder, I believe that every handpan should have accurate, stable tuning, strong volume, and long ringing sustain. I strive to achieve that in every instrument that I build, no matter the material. I do take custom orders in both nitrided steel and stainless steel. If you're interested in learning more, please visit danielsmadehandpans.com or send an email to info at danielsmadehandpans.com. I hope that this comparison video has been helpful for you. I wish you all the best in your singing steel journey. Thanks for watching and happy playing.